Welcome back guys. So today we're going to talk about constant anxiety symptoms versus anxiety symptoms that are constantly changing. Okay. So with constant anxiety symptoms, it means that they are justified. I mean, that's what it really boils down to. If you have the same symptom to set of symptoms and you're dealing with it on a daily basis or every time you get in a car or from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or every uh, night before you go to sleep, you have night anxiety and you get these same symptoms, you have to think about it. These symptoms are being justified, right? It's become a habit of the body and mind. That's one, that's one thing that's going on. But your subconscious feels justified sending you these messages for help because you are giving a fearful response. You are giving a response of annoyance. Even if you fully accept anxiety for some of you and you believe that it's not a disease or something, and you don't have a problem with that, like you don't have the health anxiety aspect, you're still getting frustrated, upset, angry whenever you have these symptoms. You, you are still giving um, those vibes back to your subconscious. And you have to realize whenever you do that, it makes the symptom continue. So if the message is chest pain and it's causing you to be afraid, right? Or it's causing you to uh, be frustrated, the mind and body thinks that it's doing its job. It's, it's only at the end of the day trying to protect you. It's trying to get you away from a, a dangerous situation. It's trying to do its job. It's trying to get you to make, and you have to make these changes to get out of it. And one of those changes is I have to convince my subconscious that it doesn't need to tighten up my chest anymore. And I do that with my actions and my responses. So a lot of you, if you're continuously responding in fear every time you have some chest pain and, oh my God, it's a heart attack, a heart attack, why would the symptom go away? It's only going to intensify. It's going to happen more often during the day, and it's going to start happening every day, okay? And obviously, the more that we respond in fear, the more constant these symptoms become. And whenever we start to get better with our acceptance, right, we go to the doctor. And I, guys, I'm only talking to you if you've been to the doctor to get checked out and you've gotten at least one opinion, all right? Get multiple opinions if you need to to get started with acceptance, right? I'm not trying to play doctor. Um, but this is for those of you that are trying to work on acceptance and you've been told that you are healthy, right? Or that you don't have any major illnesses or diseases. But say you start to get the ball rolling with acceptance, you've seen the doctor, now you're starting to make uh, some better responses, right? You're giving context, you're, you're letting your subconscious know, hey, like we're, we're safe, we're okay, we never die from this, it's gonna be fine, we're gonna get through this, I'm gonna work on my routine, we're gonna do exposure, I'm gonna desensitize, and we're gonna get out of this, I believe, I believe in us, we're gonna get out of this, you gotta have faith. Guess what, the symptom kinda starts to melt away, right? You're not entertaining it with fear. It's almost like the mind or body, it gets bored with it, right? It's not working anymore. It doesn't feel like it's doing its job if you're not acting like you're afraid. It's only sending you the chest pain and the symptoms, you know, because first of all, it's upset, it's scared, and it's trying to get you to take action. Well, if you're not really jumping up and having to do something to distract yourself or run away or go to the ER, but you're sitting there and you're talking to yourself and you're saying the right stuff, eventually the subconscious is going to feel a little si silly for sending these signals, right, to various parts of your body to, to create these physical symptoms and sensations. Um, but all of this is obviously easier said than done, right? So that's that's the constant anxiety symptoms. And guys, I get it. It's very, very difficult when you're having constant anxiety symptoms because it really messes with your acceptance. You're getting told multiple times that you're healthy and that you're fine, but you know, you go home, you're sitting on the couch and your chest starts to hurt or your heart's taken off or your blood pressure's spiking or you're getting leg pain or you're getting headaches or you're still feeling nauseous and sick to your stomach even though they said that there's nothing wrong with you you don't have cancer you don't have a heart disease it's just so mind-blowing that anxiety can make you feel the way that you feel and nothing is showing up on a test right nothing is showing up on a test so it makes it very very difficult with constant symptoms so the next thing guys is changing anxiety symptoms now this is the definition is going to be different for different people i mean for some people, they'll bounce around from 10 different things in one day. Um, for others, it's on a day-to-day -day basis, like you have a symptom or a set of symptoms. The next day, totally new set of symptoms. It could be weekly or even monthly, right? It's, you're always going through these different cycles. So there's this one's going to be more complex, right? So when symptoms are changing, there's a few different things that be, could be going on. First of all, you could be actually doing a really good job at moving on from symptoms quickly by responding the right way, 
right? Like what I was talking about, giving context, we're safe. Look, we have anxiety, we never die, we deal with this. You know, my leg has been, you know, bothering me for a few days. It's not a blood clot, something would have happened by now. Look, I'm not having, almost having a stroke every day. Like, okay, the, I got checked out by the doctor, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with my heart. I would have died by now. I've already thought that I was gonna have like, you know, 15 heart attacks in the past three days. So you're actually pretty good at getting to a level of acceptance more quickly, maybe than somebody that's in the constant anxiety category. So you're getting better with that part, right? And I started to get better with that part the further I got into my journey. I was like, I, I could give context and safety, but this is what you're doing. Every time you notice something new, right? And this is, the, this is one of the hardest parts of anxiety as far as recovery goes. This is what can keep us in this for years until we finally just let go of control and say the right stuff quickly. When you feel something new, it is scary because it is new. You haven't felt it before. So this is what's so frustrating about changing anxiety symptoms is because whenever you feel something for the first time, we start to catastrophize, right? And that's the second reason this happens or another reason that this happens. You haven't fixed your problem with overreacting to symptoms and sensations when you feel them, regardless of how many times, but especially the first time. Say you've gotten past your chest pain and you've been good for a few weeks and then you feel a weird kind of sensation in your head and then you jump to conclusions like, oh my God, I'm having a stroke, or I'm having an aneurysm, oh my God, is this a brain tumor? You're saying all the wrong stuff as if you hadn't just gone through another symptom you know, a few weeks ago and did all the wrong stuff then and then the symptoms before that and before that. We do the wrong thing every single time we feel something new. That's what you have to change. Like you have to make a decision when you feel something new, whether it's caused by anxiety or not, because sometimes you're just gonna get sick. Sometimes you're gonna have a stomach ache. But if you do the same catastrophizing, if you do the same focusing, the same checking, right? The same getting on Google, you know, go playing Dr. Google or getting on Dr. Google and doing that thing, you're gonna go through this time and time and time and time again, right? So you have to fix your problem with catastrophizing and overreacting every time you feel something new, whether it's caused by anxiety or not. You have to have a set of rules in place that's gonna be different from person to person. You know, you have to have a process, you have to have a progression that you go through. And for me, you know, if, whenever I was coming out of this and getting closer to recovery, and of course this is something that I used even after recovery. I was able to kind of calm myself down very, very quickly when I would feel something new. I told myself, look, we're not, we're not gonna overreact here. I've made that mistake time and time and time again in my past. That's what made me have anxiety for five long years. It's a weird sensation. It could be just my body chemistry being a little bit off. Maybe I, you know, are a little dehydrated, you know, or maybe I just am getting sick or something, right? You know, if it gets worse and I'm still doing all the right stuff, I'm not jumping on Google, I'm not obsessing, I'm not focusing, I'm not catastrophizing and it gets worse, or the pain gets unbearable, then I'm gonna go get checked out. That's how we're gonna handle this thing. I'm gonna let go of control. But I'm not, I refuse to do the catastrophizing thing again, the spiraling, the jumping on Google, the obsessing, the checking, the pushing, the prodding, all that stuff. And since I was able to change that, I will not go back into one of these cycles again. I will not go back into one of these cycles again. I will catch myself before that happens. I refuse to go back there. So a lot of you have not changed your response when you feel something new, right? And you have to think about it like this too. This is another reason why your symptoms are changing. Your old ones tend to go away, right? So say like your chest is bothering you for a few days and then all of a sudden you have like a, we'll just use your head for an example because I'm right here on the camera. It's hard for you to see my leg down here. So say you get a pain in your head, you're like, oh no, what's that, right? Because it's scarier because it's new. You've been kind of accustomed to this chest pain. It's still bothering you. It still frustrates you. You haven't reached a level of acceptance yet that it's that it's anxiety, not a heart problem, but this appears new and that feels weird. Guys, within like an hour, you could have zero chest pain and now it's all up here. That's It can shift and move because your focus moves. See, now the mind and the body is realizing the chest pain isn't doing its job right, for you to get help or get us help, the conscious, subconscious help. But this is doing its job, right? You focused on it, now you're directing tension there, and now it's, it turns into a new mini habit. So now that signal continues. And until you, you know, until you feel something new or you accept that there's nothing wrong with this, it'll continue. 
and then you'll find something else. That's, that's another problem. <laughs> We're always looking for something. Take a break on the looking, okay? If something's really obvious, it's going to be obvious, okay? <laughs> but guys, I hope this helped. Um, if you want more help with your anxiety recovery process, check out my course, Elite Anxiety Bootcamp. I'm going to put that down below in the description in the first spin comment. I'm going to read you this review real quick. At Optimus Ron 23, Trey's videos, boot camp, and his calls have legit been better than the 10 different psychologists and psychiatrists I've been to. Not saying they aren't beneficial for some, but so blessed Trey puts these videos and his time out to us for a super reasonable price. Thank you, sir. Be a part of that course. It's going to break everything down step by step. Plus, there's a lot of downloadable bonus materials in there. You get a routine, your diet cheat sheet, you get affirmations, um, tons of stuff in there. So check that out. Be a part of that. It's changing lives. I want you to have a chance to change your life, right? And, and get towards that anxiety recovery that you've been looking for. Um, coaching info is down there. Um, I link for online therapies down there. Check out all those resources. Um, but I love you guys and I'm going to see you soon. All right. Bye.